We continue on with chapter 11, The Dynamics of the Ego. No one can escape from illusions unless he looks at them, for not looking is the way they are protected. There is no need to shrink from illusions, for they cannot be dangerous. We are ready to look more closely at the ego's thought system because together we have the lamp that will dispel it. And since you realize you do not want it, you must be ready. The quote dynamics of the ego will be our lesson for a while. For we must look first at this to see beyond it, since you have made it real. We will undo this error quietly together and then look beyond it to truth. What is healing? but the removal of all that stands in the way of knowledge. And how else can one dispel illusions except by looking at them directly, without protecting them? Be not afraid, therefore, for what you will be looking at is the source of fear, and you are beginning to learn that fear is not real. You are also learning that its effects can be dispelled merely by denying their reality. The next step is obviously to recognize that what has no effects does not exist. Laws do not operate in a vacuum, and what leads to nothing has not happened. If reality is recognized by its extension, what leads to nothing could not be real. Do not be afraid then to look upon fear, for it cannot be seen. Clarity undoes confusion by definition, and to look upon darkness through light must dispel it. Let us begin this lesson in, quote, ego dynamics by understanding that the term itself does not mean anything. It contains the very contradiction in terms that makes it meaningless. Dynamics implies the power to do something, and the whole separation fallacy lies in the belief that the ego has the power to do anything. The ego is fearful to you because you believe this. Yet the truth is very simple. All power is of God. What is not of Him has no power to do anything. When we look at the ego, then, we are not considering dynamics, but delusions. You can surely regard a delusional system without fear, for it cannot have any effects if its source is not real. Fear becomes more obviously inappropriate if you recognize the ego's goal, which is so clearly senseless that any effort on its behalf is necessarily expended on nothing. The ego's goal is quite explicitly ego autonomy. From the beginning then, its purpose is to be separate, sufficient unto itself and independent of any power except its own. This is why it is the symbol of separation. Every idea has a purpose, and its purpose is always the natural outcome of what it is. Everything that stems from the ego is the natural outcome of its central belief, and the way to undo its results is merely to recognize that their source is not natural, being out of accord with your true nature. I said before that to will contrary to God is wishful thinking and not real willing. His will is one, because the extension of His will cannot be unlike itself. The real conflict you experience, then, is between the ego's idle wishes and the will of God, which you share. Can this be a real conflict? Yours is the independence of creation, not of autonomy. Your whole creative function lies in your complete dependence on God, whose function He shares with you. By His willingness to share it, He became as dependent on you as you are on Him. 
Do not ascribe the ego's arrogance to him who wills not to be dependent of you. He has included you in his autonomy. Can you believe that autonomy is meaningful apart from him? The belief in ego autonomy is costing you the knowledge of your dependence on God in which your freedom lies. The ego sees all dependency as threatening and has twisted even your longing for God into a means of establishing itself. But do not be deceived by its interpretation of your conflict. The ego always attacks on behalf of separation. Believing it has the power to do this, it does nothing else, because its goal of autonomy is nothing else. The ego is literally, totally confused about reality but it does not lose sight of its goal. It is much more vigilant than you are because it is perfectly certain of its purpose. You are confused because you do not recognize yours. You must recognize that the last thing the ego wishes you to realize is that you are afraid of it. For if the ego could give rise to fear, it would diminish your independence and weaken your power. Yet its one claim to your allegiance is that it can give power to you. Without this belief you would not listen to it at all. How then can its existence continue if you realize that, by accepting it, you are belittling yourself and depriving yourself of power? The ego can and does allow you to regard yourself as supercilious, unbelieving, light-hearted, distant, emotionally shallow, callous, uninvolved, and even desperate, but not really afraid. Minimizing fear but not its undoing is the ego's constant effort, and is indeed a skill at which it is very ingenious. How can it preach separation without unholding it through fear, and would you listen to it if you recognized this is what it is doing. Your recognition that whatever seems to separate you from God is only fear, regardless of the form it takes and quite apart from how the ego wants you to experience it, is therefore the basic ego threat. Its dream of autonomy is shaken to its foundation by this awareness, for though you may countenance a false idea of independence, you will not accept the cost of fear if you recognize it. Yet this is the cost, and the ego cannot minimize it. If you overlook love, you are overlooking yourself, and you must fear unreality because you have denied yourself. By believing that you have successfully attacked truth, you are believing that attack has power. Very simply then, you have become afraid of yourself, and no one wants to find what he believes would destroy him. If the ego's goal of autonomy could be accomplished, God's purpose could be defeated, and this is impossible. Only by learning what fear is can you finally learn to distinguish the possible from the impossible, and the false from the true. According to the ego's teaching, its goal can be accomplished and God's purpose cannot. According to the Holy Spirit's teaching, only God's purpose can be accomplished and it is accomplished already. God is as dependent on you as you are on Him because His autonomy encompasses yours and is therefore incomplete without it. You can only establish your autonomy by identifying with Him and fulfilling your function as it exists in truth. The ego believes that to accomplish its goal is happiness, but it is given you to know that God's function is yours, and happiness cannot be found apart from your joint will. Recognize that the ego's goal, which you have pursued so diligently, has merely brought you fear, and it becomes difficult to maintain that fear is happiness. Upheld by fear, this is what the ego would have you believe. Yet God's Son is not insane. 
and cannot believe it. Let him but recognize it, and he will not accept it. For only the insane would choose fear in place of love, and only the insane could believe that love can be gained by attack. But the sane realized that only attack could produce fear, from which the love of God completely protects them. The ego analyzes, the Holy Spirit accepts. The appreciation of wholeness comes only through acceptance, for to analyze means to break down or to separate out. The attempt to understand totality by breaking it down is clearly the characteristically contradictory approach of the ego to everything. The ego believes that power, understanding, and truth lie in separation, and to establish this belief it must attack. Unaware that the belief cannot be established, and obsessed with the conviction that separation is salvation, the ego attacks everything it perceives by breaking it into small disconnected parts without meaning, full relationships, and therefore without meaning. The ego will always substitute chaos for meaning, for if separation is salvation, harmony is threat. The ego's interpretations of the laws of perception are, and would have to be, the exact opposite of the Holy Spirit's. The ego focuses on error and overlooks truth. It makes real every mistake it perceives and with characteristically circular reasoning concludes that because of the mistake, consistent truth must be meaningless. The next step, then, is obvious. If consistent truth is meaningless, inconsistency must be true. Holding error clearly in mind, and protecting what it has made, the ego proceeds to the next step in its thought system. Error is real, and truth is error. The ego makes no attempt to understand this, and it is clearly not understandable. But the ego does make every attempt to demonstrate it, and this it does constantly. Analyzing to attack meaning, the ego succeeds in overlooking it, and is left with a series of fragmented perceptions which it unifies on behalf of itself. This then becomes the universe it perceives, and it is this universe which in turn becomes its demonstration of its own reality. Do not underestimate the appeal of the ego's demonstrations to those who would listen. Selective perception chooses its witnesses carefully, and its witnesses are constant, consistent. The case for insanity is strong to the insane, for reasoning ends at its beginning, and no thought system transcends its source. Yet reasoning without meaning cannot demonstrate anything, and those who are convinced by it must be deluded. Can the ego teach truly when it overlooks truth? Can it perceive what it has denied? The ego looks straight at the father and does not see him, for it has denied his son. Would you remember the father? Accept his son and you will remember him. Nothing can demonstrate that his son is unworthy for nothing can prove that a lie is true. What you see of his son through the eyes of the ego is a demonstration that his son does not exist. Yet where the son is, the father must be. Accept what God does not deny, and it will demonstrate its truth. The witnesses for God stand in his light and behold what he created. Their silence is the sign that they have beheld God's son, and in the presence of Christ they need demonstrate nothing, for Christ speaks to them of himself and of his Father. They are silent because Christ speaks to them, and it is his words they speak. Every brother you meet becomes a witness for Christ or for the ego, depending on what you perceive in him. Everyone convinces you of what you want to perceive, and of the reality of the kingdom you have chosen for your vigilance. Everything you perceive is a witness to the thought system you want to be true. 
Every brother has the power to release you if you choose to be free. You cannot accept false witnesses of him unless you have evoked false witnesses against him. If he speaks not of Christ to you, you spoke not of Christ to him. You hear but your own voice, and if Christ speaks through you, you will hear him. And from the workbook. Lesson 82 We will review these ideas today. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. My forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. My forgiveness is the means by which I become aware of the light of the world in me. My forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed, together with myself. Let me then forgive the world, that it may be healed along with me. Suggestions for specific forms for applying this idea are, Let peace extend from my mind to yours. Blank. I share the light of the world with you. Blank. Through my forgiveness I can see this as it is. Let me not forget my function. I would not forget my function because I would remember myself. I cannot fulfill my function if I forget it. And unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience the joy that God intends for me. Suitable, specific forms of this idea include Let me not use this to hide my function from me. I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. This may threaten my ego, but cannot change my function in any way. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. Let me not forget my function. Today we open to forgiveness. Releasing every ego thought. Be open to our function. Seeing through the miracle. Extending forgiveness to everything. Clarity undoes confusion by definition. And to look upon darkness through light must dispel it. Today I remember that all power is of God. And what is not of Him has no power to do anything. Today I release all belief in ego dynamics. Today I choose creation over personal autonomy. I choose forgiveness over holding grievances. I release all belief in ego autonomy. This blocks myself from the awareness of life in God. Today I would be God dependent and let everything else go. Let everything else fall away. I will not be fooled by fear today. 
I will remember the love and fear nothing. Today I accept the happiness that God gives to me. Remembering my joint will, joined with the Father. Today I accept what the Holy Spirit offers. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. Let me not forget my function. Amen.